Cancer is one of the most complex diseases that mankind has to face. We used to think that cancers were more or less similar as long as you stayed within one anatomic site. Like breast cancers tended to be similar to one another and colon cancers tended to be similar to one another. And what we now know is that that's not at all true. If you look at um, lung cancer, the number one cancer killer in the world by a mile, um, the, this is a t the, the number one variant of this tumor is called non-small cell lung cancer. Um, so if you think about that for a second, that means we don't know what it is, but it's not small cell. And that's the diagnosis that most people in the world carry today uh, when they're diagnosed with the number one cancer killer. So it's, it's a disease which is not further classified in most cases. And, and, and I will acknowledge that there have been some very interesting um, developments over the last five years. For most patients, those developments still are not part of the treatment paradigm. Um, so I'm looking forward to, to you know, rethinking the number one cancer killer in the world. If we can figure out what type of genomic defects exist in a given tumor for an individual person, we could then try to tailor this therapy towards that individual person. In glioblastoma, we, we um, uh, were able to generate a, a, an amazing data set of integrated data with gene expression and copy number and mutation. And one of the things that we noticed was uh, groups of patients uh, with glioblastoma who had very different patterns of disease, and we called these subtypes. And this type of subtype discovery is, is something we do a lot in cancer research. And one of the important things, I think, is that uh, the subtypes look like they differed by one of, uh, one of our most exciting um, uh, therapeutic targets, and that's the epidermal growth factor receptor. In the past, many targeted trials have failed because they've taken one drug to treat a whole population of patients. But if you can identify the best population to match a given drug with, you're more likely to achieve success, and even great success, in a smaller fraction of patients who have this disease. That type of success example is driving the effort to, in parallel, characterize the changes as we're doing in TCGA but in parallel also uh, influencing a shift in clinical practice where more and more physicians, more and more hospitals are beginning to think about how they can profile their patient coming in so that they have that information and match them up to the right therapy. I can see a day not too far from now when we would be, physicians like me would be doing that routinely and that would then let us pick a, a directed therapy, a personalized therapy for that patient's cancer. We set out nearly 30 years ago to identify the genes that cause cancer of the kidney. It took us 10 years to find our first gene. Now, we're very happy about that. Uh, we can use that gene to make the diagnosis earlier in a whole lot of families and in patients with, with this disorder, with this cancer. But also now, the FDA has approved six drugs, six drugs for patients with advanced cancer based on that first cancer gene. What it took us 10 years to do with the Cancer Genome Atlas, we could probably now do in six months. I mean, it's just so much faster. And even though we've come a long way, uh, we have a, a long way to go.